Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. First, a disclaimer. In this newsletter series, we will share the latest research studies, news and events in the healthspan field that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Dr. Sinclair tweeted this week about a resveratrol trial with patients who had muscular dystrophy. The study was an open-label phase two trial, so looking out of efficacy. The aim of the study was to see if resveratrol provides benefits to patients with MD. The trial had 11 participants. The participants started at 500 milligrams and worked up to 1500 milligrams. The primary outcomes were motor function measurement and muscular strength measured with quantitative muscle testing or QMT along with serum levels of creatine kinase, a marker of muscle damage. Secondary outcomes were adverse effects and tolerability. The one thing I did want to mention in terms of the procedure of the study was that they administered the resveratrol. Here we can see that it was orally administered with no further explanation. They looked at the serum levels and saw that it peaked quickly after the administration and that this was consistent with what they had seen in healthy volunteers. This does, does seem to say that taking resveratrol orally is effective and it is not clear that it does need to be dissolved in fat. Looking at the results, we can see that despite the advanced state of the disease, the MFM scores increased from 34.6 to 38.4, and a twofold increase was found in the QMT scores, while CK levels decreased considerably by 34%, though they did notice some side effects with 1.5 grams. Here we can see the results of the QMT test scores graphed over time for each of the participants. The scapular elevation, basically the ability to raise the shoulder, and the shoulder abduction, the ability to raise the arm, show good improvements. Whereas the pinch strength showed almost none. As they noted in the study, the resveratrol seemed to help with the central muscles, but not with those on the periphery. It is encouraging to see these positive results for resveratrol in a clinical trial. There have been a number of papers that look at how young blood can rejuvenate older organisms. You may recall the preprint paper from Dr. Horvath and others on the dramatic effect it had on rats earlier this year, for example. The issue with this as a therapy is that it would require the blood of young animals, or in our case, young humans. So various studies have been conducted to identify the specific rejuvenation factors present in the young blood. The observations suggest that increasing these rejuvenation factors could promote restorative biological processes or inhibit degeneration. In this study, the authors summarized the current findings regarding these rejuvenation factors. Here we see the 10 factors that they have identified that change with age, and in the paper they review how these can affect the health and functioning of the body. They are all interesting, but on the right we can see one that is there, ENAMPT, which is specifically related to lifespan. NAMPT is the rate-limiting enzyme in the NAD salvage pathway. And as you may be aware, NAD declines with age. What they found is that ENAMPT, that is NAMPT outside the cell, decreases, and that by increasing ENAMPT, you can maintain NAD plus levels during aging and prevent age-associated physiological decline and extend lifespan. This seems like a more viable prospect for therapy than harvesting blood from young people. Next, our event corner. There are three events that we found interesting this week. All of them are free, but you need to register first. Please find the links in the description if you are interested. First, on Monday, November the 30th at 6.30pm UTC, The Ethics of Anti-Aging, which is hosted by David Wood, a futurist speaker and author, and co-hosted by the Oxford Society of Aging and Longevity. Mr. Wood will be discussing attitudes towards radical life extension and common philosophical objections to anti-aging technologies. Next, on December the 1st, 7 p.m. UTC, a free webinar on Zoom, Reversing Physical Aging, presented by Dr. Thierry Hertog, who will talk about how to reverse physical aging. Third, the Peptide Summit, a five-day virtual event from December the 7th to the 11th. The event will be hosted by Kent Holtorf, with over 40 presenters. Peptides are getting more popular in the anti-aging field and we are interested to learn more on the subject. Please note that unless you want to watch earlier or you upgrade to own the program, the event is free to watch from December the 7th to the 11th. 
Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the Modern Healthspan newsletter informative. As we find more interesting research and longevity news, we will release our next newsletter. Please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.